Okay, guys, the first thing we're going to do is this has to do with exponential functions. And this is kind of like what we have done thus far um, in talking about it. But we're going to go add, I'm going to add a little bit. Okay, so the first part, this is so just like what you've been doing the table out of, and then you've been graphing it. So I want you to do the same thing on this. So we're going to make the table. That'll be first. And just like when we did the other page, you want to have your X values. They can be about anything, but I would definitely want to include some negatives and some positives and a zero. Okay, if you substituted them in for X, just like we had done earlier, this is what you're going to get. All right, because two the first power is 2 and so forth okay so then we're going to graph it so far this is everything that we've already done all right so we have um, a negative 2.25 a negative 1 here one here over 1 up 2 over 2 up 4 okay so basically we have something that looks like this. Oops. Okay. So now we're going to come over here. We're going to discuss what these mean. First of all, we need to pick either growth or decay. If you read this from left to right, just like you read in the English language, we go here and we read across, it's going up. It's starting down here and it goes up. So if it's going up from left to right, that is called the growth. Okay. The domain, remember, domain are your x values out of domain and range. For the domain, this keeps going that way, and it keeps going up and out. So your domain would be all real numbers, because it does keep going. All right, on the range, where is it on the y-axis? Well, it starts any place above the zero. It does not include the zero. So your y is going to be greater than zero. Okay, your y intercept. Your y intercept is wherever the x is a zero. So if you look over here, it'll tell you there, or you can just look at, at the graph. Whoops. And um, I kind of highlighted that in the wrong spot. But that shows you that it is at the one, so it's an ordered pair of zero, one. Okay, and the last thing here, this is called the asthmatope, and the asthmatope is basically what line does this curve down to, but it never touches, and that would be at the zero. So you put y is equal to the zero. Okay, let's look at another one just like this, only slightly different. Okay, so the first thing is you're going to make a table. Okay, so I like to use a negative 2, a negative 1, a 0, 1, and 2. Sorry. And then that's going to give me 16, 4, 1, 0.25, and point zero six two five. Okay, so if I was going to graph that, I would go to the negative two and then up to the sixteen, which is going to be off of this because it just goes to ten. So then a negative one four back one up four, a zero one, and look that is where we're crossing over at the y the y-intercept. Then we have a over 1 and up just 0.25 and then over 2 and we're just barely. So basically this is going to look something like this. Alright, so let's look at it. We're starting over here. We read from left to right. So over time this is going down and if it goes down from left to right that is called decay. The domain 
it keeps going up and out and it keeps going that way so your domain is all real numbers okay let's look at the range the range is where does it fall on the y-axis well that's just like up here to where it doesn't touch the zero but it's everything above it so it's y is greater than zero this also happened to have a y-intercept at the zero one and the asymptote is also y is equal to zero okay let's look at one that is different from those and here we go and it's right here okay um, if you're going to graph this one so of course for our X's we're going to choose a negative 2 a negative 1 0 1 and 2 you don't have to but those those feel pretty standard okay if I substitute these in for my exponent I'm going to end up getting I'm a negative 0.8 repeating it's like a negative 0 0.8888 8, 8, 8, 8. then I have a negative 0 0.6 repeating this is 0 1 2 and 2 8 so that's what happened if I punch that into the calculator okay now I'm going to I'm going to graph it so to graph it I have um, I'm a negative 2 that's over 2 and look this one is just barely down under like this and then I have a negative 1 and a negative 6 a 0 0 over 1 up 2 and over 2 up 4 so this is actually going to look different and look it's going to come down like that all right so let's go through and answer our questions because this is different from what we've done in the past okay going from left to right look how it goes up from here to here it goes up this one went down this one goes up so that's growth the domain is also all real numbers because it keeps going left and right now when we look at the range this is going to go down to the negative one it's not going to go below it so your range is going to be y is greater than a negative one okay when we look at these equations when we're looking for what's different about them so why did it come down past the zero x what you're going to look at is it's not just three to the x power sorry it's not just three to the x power but we have a negative one that negative one is going to tell you how far you come down okay so like this equation here how far down or how far up is this line going to be well yeah that's at the four so that tells me that this line is going to end up being it's not going to go below the positive four because of this part right here so that tells me that my range is y is greater than a positive 4 because every y this is going to end up coming up like that every y is above the 4 here every y is above the negative 1 because the negative 1 is the lowest point a 0 is the lowest point so the range is above that okay the, the y intercept here is zero zero and last but not least the asymptote is what's the lowest point it goes to and this goes as low as a negative one this problem here the asymptote would be y equals four because it does not go below the four 
Okay, we're going to do just a little bit of review to go back over for your systems test. And so now that we've done the problems in review, um, where we talked about changing the equations into slope intercept form and then putting them into the calculator, you could really do about every problem on this test that way. So like here, I could take this first equation and I can change it into slope intercept form by moving them the mx using inverse operation so I could add 3x onto both sides just like we've done for bell work th this past week and then divide by what's in front of the y and that gives me y equals x minus 8 that's the first equation and then I could take this second equation and do the same thing. So I'm going to do, um, it's a negative x plus 2y equals a negative 10. Okay, the first step, move the mx by adding or subtracting. So I'm going to add x to both sides. Then I'm going to divide by what's in front of the y. Those are your only two steps. So this gives me y equals that has an understood one, so it's one half x, and then a minus five. Okay, if you put these two equations into your calculator, like we've been doing, where you go to graph, enter an equation, hit tab, enter the other one, then you go to menu, down to analyze, and then to um, intersection then you're going to find that you end up getting for your answer the correct answer which would be that one and it would look just like this this on your calculator when you graph it okay well let's say we have one like look guys this one this one both of those you could do the same thing you can change them into slope intercept form and find the answer that one now here, you're going to find that your two equations, this one and then this one when I changed it to slope-intercept form, oops, sorry, you have the same slope. If your two equations have the same slope, that means um, the same slope but a different y-intercept, that means that they do not have a solution. This system has no solution. Same slope, different y-intercepts, because that means they would have the same slope, like this, but they would intersect different points, like if that was on the y-axis, this intersects there and that does there. So that means that they would, no solution, because they're parallel. Okay, if you get the same equations, like we had this equation, and then we took the other one and we moved our y over and got this. Well, they're the same exact equation, so that means infinitely many. All right, so some of the biggest things here for you to remember, like on these two guys, is you could punch this in the calculator just how it looks. This one, you need to change it in to a slope intercept form. Once you do that, punch it in the calculator going through. And remember, to change it into slope intercept form, these are the steps. Okay, step one is to move the MX. And that means to move it away from the Y. And you do that by adding or subtracting. Okay, and step two is you're going to divide by the number in front of the y. Once you do those, you can punch it in the calculator. And that will work on all these systems of equations. If it's a word problem, then you just have to turn it into systems. Like, for example, here, um, he had an annual fee of $10. So look, that is your initial cost. 
plus 650 per game. So that would be this, $6.50 per game. The other one has an annual fee of $46, that is your initial cost, plus $350 per game, and that's here. Then you can punch those in, in the calculator and it'll give you your X and your Y. So hopefully if you attack your systems of equations to retake test that way, then um, you'll do a lot better. But you have to know how to do this and then punch it into the calculator. And once you know those two things, you'll be fine. Once again, to punch it into the calculator, you go to graph, and then you enter in the first, first equation, okay? Then hit tab, enter in the other equation, and then go to, go to menu, analyze your graph, then you'll go over and go down to um, I can't, I think it's intersection is what they use for, for the term there. And then um, you click there. After that, you get your hand, like if the point of intersection, let's say, is there, you move the little hand over here and you will click here. And then you punch it over, you slide over, and you will click on, whoops, you, and then you click on that side, and then it will tell you what your point of intersection is. All right, um, so remember the growth and decay. Growth goes up, decay goes down. Like if you were, are, um, if you're growing, you're getting taller. If something decays, then it goes, goes away, it breaks up. So those are some things I want you to remember about what we went over today.